morning, everyone. Thanks for coming along. Um, so my name's Jodie Smith. I'm the branch head of the Oceans, Reefs, Coasts and the Antarctic branch here at Geoscience Australia. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you here, both in person and online, to Geoscience Australia's Wednesday seminar. And today, um, it is a distinguished Geoscience Australia lecture seminar. Uh, I'd like to start by, uh, with an acknowledgement of country. Um, so Geoscience Australia acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of country throughout Australia and acknowledges their continuing connection to land, waters and community. We pay our respects to the people, the cultures and the elders past and present. So today's Wednesday seminar, which will be presented by our distinguished Geoscience Australia lecturer, David Arnold, um, with the topic of navigating complexity with digital technologies, improving decision making within Australia's mar maritime jurisdiction. So David Arnold today will be talking about how Australia's ocean territory is vast and complex, governed by multifaceted regulatory frameworks spanning various portfolios and jurisdictions. With develop development and interdependence increasing within the marine domain, emerging industries must coexist with established activities, rules and protections. Digital spatial technologies provide tools to visualise and understand the interactions and intersections between use, rights, restrictions and responsibilities in this marine domain. Geoscience Australia, through the Australian Marine Spatial Information System, or AMSIS, provides access to authoritative Commonwealth regulatory information and integrates data across multiple marine sectors, providing context for improved decision making and marine planning, enhancing coordination and sustainable management for government, industry and communities. So a bit about our speaker today. David is the Assistant Director of the Marine Spatial Information Team within the Oceans, Reefs, Coasts and the Antarctic Branch here at Geoscience Australia. He brings over 14 years of experience in cartography and communication products for government, industries and communities. In his current role, David leverages his experience to collaborate with Australian government, marine agencies and international working groups to provide greater understanding to spatial interactions between offshore activities. He is committed to delivering accessible digital knowledge platforms, contributing to improving management of Australia's maritime jurisdiction. Please join me in welcoming David to the stage. Thank you very much, Jodie. So before we begin, I'd like to reiterate the previous acknowledgement to the traditional owners and custodians of country throughout Australia, and the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people, custodians of the lands on which we're meeting on today, acknowledging their continuing connection to land, waters and community, and paying respects to the people, culture, and elders past and present. Firstly, I'd like to thank the organisers for the opportunity to introduce myself and to present to my colleagues and community on the work done within our program to modernise the Australian Marine Spatial Information System known as AMSIS. My name is David Arnold. As Jody said, I'm the Assistant Director of the Marine Spatial Information Team within the Oceans, Reefs, Coast and the Antarctic Branch, part of the Place and Communities Division here at Geoscience Australia. Today, I'll be presenting about our work to modernise AMSIS to deliver authoritative regulatory data to support information-based planning by the Australian Government to assist in the management and administration of Australia's marine jurisdiction. Over the next half an hour or so, I'll provide an overview of the role of digital technologies and how they can improve the decision-making process, and I'll highlight some of the complexities and challenges we faced along the way. Everything happens somewhere. It's a simple enough statement, uncomplicated and obvious. It also opens the introduction to the Integrated Geospatial Information Framework, which is the overarching strategic document published by the United Nations Committee of Experts on Global Geospatial Information Management, the UNGGIM. And despite its simplicity, at its core underpins a central interest and curiosity to understand what is going on where. Geospatial information provides a link between location and action, and in the application of this knowledge, allows us to implement measures, plans, rules and protections to manage the human, economic and environmental activity and their impacts. Reliable access to authoritative geospatial information is at the centre of a nation's digital economy and is an essential currency for evidence-based decision making as we, as a nation and members of the global community, transition to a modern data and digital driven society. My interests, 
and that of our program is in providing simplified and seamless access to this critical information, particularly the legal and spatial frameworks to support the management and marine planning for Australia's jurisdiction. Marine jurisdiction. As Jody said, Australia's Ocean Territory is a vast, complex and highly regulated space managed by multiple portfolios across multiple jurisdictions. With development increasing in the domain, new interests must coexist with the existing activities, rules and protections. Digital spatial technologies provide tools to visualise intersections and interactions between proposed and existing activities and can provide users with an understanding of the various rights, restrictions and responsibilities within the jurisdiction. Geoscience Australia, through the Australian Marine Spatial Information System, provides access to authoritative Commonwealth regulatory information and provides further context through additional curated data to assist with spatial planning, improving coordination and sustainable management for government, industry and communities. With that in mind, I'm going to move on to present a simplified view of Australia's marine context. The marine and coastal environment is innately linked with our cultural identity, our economy and our lifestyle, with a large percentage of our population living close to the sea. The Australian marine jurisdiction covers an extensive area and is the third largest marine jurisdiction on Earth. At nearly 11.5 million square kilometres, excluding the Australian Antarctic Territory, it's nearly twice the surface of the Australian landmass, accounting for roughly 4% of the Earth's ocean area. To put this into local perspective, the largest body, water body within our region here is, is Lake George. And according to Digital Earth Australia water bodies, it's currently over 144 square kilometres. That equates to approximately 80,000 Lake George equivalents to make up our marine jurisdiction. Our offshore area is inherently a co-use zone and supports many diverse users and uses on the surface, above, within the water column, on the seafloor and below. To highlight some of the complexity and competing interests, this image is produced from our colleagues in Land Information New Zealand and demonstrates some of the supported use and activities, including shipping and transport, cruising and recreational vessels, commercial and recreational fishing, ocean tourism and aquaculture, the oil and gas industry, marine scientific research, and defence activities. And it identifies some of the complex geophysical characteristics, as well as giving consideration to the environment and marine ecosystems, supporting countless marine species, migratory birds and animals within our ocean environment. As diverse as the number of uses, there are countless international treaties and agreements and more than 100 pieces of Commonwealth legislation and regulation which apply to our marine jurisdiction. Some of the key pieces of legislation and international agreements include the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, known as UNCLOS, which establishes the legal framework for Australia's maritime jurisdiction. Domestic legislation, including the Seas and Submerged Lands Act, which define Australia's territorial sea, exclusive economic zone and continental shelf boundaries. The Offshore Petroleum and Greenhouse Gas Storage Act, which regulate, regulates offshore petroleum exploration within Australia. The Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. The EPBC is the Australian Government's central piece of environmental legislation, providing the legal framework to protect and manage important flora, fauna and manage uh, ecological communities and heritage places. And the Offshore Electricity Infrastructure Act, recently passed, this act enables the establishment of offshore renewable electricity projects in Commonwealth waters, which I'll be circling back to you later in the presentation. Adding to that complexity is the decentralised management for the marine domain, with responsibility allocated to multiple entities, Australian government, departments, agencies and regulatory bodies, with responsibilities to administer and implement our laws and regulations. These bodies oversee many different sectors and legal and administrative aspects within the jurisdiction. At any given moment, we have an ocean of data at our fingertips. And just as the ocean is variable in depth, breadth and clarity, so are many factors related to the data that's available to us, including scale, accuracy, currency, consistency and completeness. The challenge here is being able to firstly find it and then filter out what information you need, making sure that there's an appropriate level of trust attached to that information. Recognising the critical value of authoritative data ensuring the availability and accessibility of trusted marine spatial information 
helps us realise the greatest potential benefit. And we need to consider emerging industries. As I mentioned earlier, our ocean is fundamentally a co-use zone, but demand within our marine space is increasing, and consideration to existing interests and users is paramount when planning for new technologies and the future use. Shared use of jurisdiction is essential, and the Australian Government balances competing interests while pursuing the sustainable use and management of our offshore area and its resources. This pursuit of balance between existing and increasing competing use and users is crucial in the support of a sustainable ocean economy and in achieving Australia's recent international policy commitments for a national sustainable ocean plan and in establishing an offshore renewable energy industry. So now that we've peered below the surface, we can begin to understand some of the challenges faced with considering how to manage and administer the jurisdiction. So how can digital technologies assist us in improving our understanding and help users, policy and decision makers navigate these complexities? Largely this is, this is about presenting geospatial information, the where, what, who, why and when, in a way that can be better understood. Because if a user can't understand it, then it can't be considered when the time comes to make a decision. While data on its own is valuable and an important asset and product, in isolation its function and use can be limited. The utility and impact of data can be enhanced by integrating it into a system which, when combined and connected with other data and or other data themes and systems, allows users to generate insights necessary to make informed decisions to help address the challenges facing our society, economy and environment. Geographic information systems allow users to visualise, interact and analyse information to inform our understanding of the world around us and assist us to solve complex problems faced in our communities as a nation and within the region. Today, access to spatial technologies and spatial information is easier than ever, with free, open access to satellite data, navigation systems, online queries to find local businesses and restaurants, and real-time emergency management updates, often in the palm of our hands. But that wasn't always the case. Something formerly thought of and left to the realm of specialists, developments over the past decades have improved access and availability of spatial technologies which are now ubiquitous in our everyday lives, whether we realise it or not. And while not quite as simplified or as streamlined as a Google search, and far more specific in use, AMSIS has served as a long-standing decision support tool maintained by Geoscience Australia, bringing together information required by government, industry and individuals with an interest in the regulation, geography and use of Australia's marine jurisdiction, and provides a mechanism to visualise competing interests in the marine space. Using curated data from across government, state and academia to highlight competing use and enable discussion with multi-sectoral users to better plan and manage the jurisdiction. And when I say long-standing, I mean it. AMSIS was first conceptualised back in 2002 and released in 2004. To put that into perspective, consider that Google Maps and Google Earth were released in 2005. The version of AMSIS back then was understandably considerably different to as, it's how, as to how it's delivered today, but the driving principles and program goals largely remain the same. Created to support the Australian Government's responsibility to publish our maritime boundaries and marine jurisdiction in accordance with the provisions under UNCLOS and the Season Submerged Lands Act. Providing access to authoritative, trusted information and presenting it in a clear and consumable way for non-experts to understand use within our marine environment. Since then, AMSIS has undergone multiple revisions, notably driven by changing technologies and the broader availability of authoritative information as other Australian government departments began to publish data in accessible spatial formats. Which leads us to our latest efforts to iterate and deliver an updated AMSIS. In late 2021, we began the process to modernise and improve the way AMSIS was delivered, reviewing what it was delivering, how it was doing it, and with a view to broadening its utility to provide intergovernmental support for the Department of Climate Change, Energy, Environment and Water to establish an offshore renewable energy industry in Australia. So we began by defining our high level requirements, identifying functions and capabilities, our timeline and our resources available, establishing a pathway for us to meet our long term responsibility to provide greater access, connectivity and utility to the information needed to support marine planning. Like previous versions, it needs to provide relevant information to be used by policy and decision makers. 
the system needed to be publicly available, freely accessible, web-based interactive environment. Using a service-based approach to access open web services from Australian government authorities and consolidate it into a simple interface to support access and use by specialists and non-specialists alike. Critically, it needed to be sustainable and enterprise supported. Based on our requirements, we divided our efforts into several streams to approach, centred on four fundamental principles to be accessible, authoritative, collaborative and sustainable. From a technology perspective, we had several key options to consider. Infrastructure, interface and catalogue. Primarily, our infrastructure needed to be supported by enterprise, which provided an environment to create, test and manage content to deliver a fit-for-purpose solution. From an interface perspective, it needed to be simple to use, intuitive and able to support public maps, image, images and contextual content, as well as the need for a comprehensive catalogue to provide access to all the data available within the system. Each of these aspects had to be delivered without barrier to assumed level of knowledge and presented as a seamless experience for users. Now some of you might have pricked your ears at the term fit for purpose, and I'm about to open that can of worms. I debated where to put this in, but decided to front load it. Fit for purpose can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. When I hear it and use it, I'm talking about delivering an outcome or a solution in answer to a problem and succeeding at what it sets out to do. But I'm also providing a caveat, which is consideration or a concession with regards to usually one of three factors, time, effort, and resourcing. Offering a solution to the needs of the moment while managing constraints fulfills a critical goal of any project. Fit for purpose cuts through the unnecessary, emphasising outcomes and efficiency as the primary drivers. Iterating, implementing and evaluating and repeat. Alongside the need to provide information that's accessible and understandable, the largest risk we take is not having the information available for decision makers at the time a decision needs to be made. Any effort to mitigate that represents progress and is a demonstration of success. As the saying goes, perfection is the enemy of progress. Do not fail to deliver in pursuit of a perfect solution. Delivering support, especially ongoing support, necessitates shifting with the surroundings, maintaining an adaptable and responsible, a responsive environment and a philosophy to iterate. Plan for what's required, don't over-engineer it. The redevelopment of AMSIS has seen transition to a sustainable enterprise, enterprise supported infrastructure utilising our existing organisational environment, using a commercial off-the-shelf solution, in this case, powered by ESRI's ArcGIS Online, and delivered by an ArcGIS Hub, where our approach has been to configure, not to customise, and leverage out-of-the-box functionalities, tools and templates where possible. Acknowledging that this brings with it some limitations, those factors are outweighed by the relatively low barrier of entry and integration with the tools, applications and capabilities delivered by ArcGIS Online platform and integrated with our agency. The nature of the hub modular builder has also been extremely beneficial in affording us to rapidly ideate, test and review with reduced technical requirement to deliver a fit for purpose solution. AMSIS is designed with principles of integrated geospatial infrastructure and modern SDI, spatial data infrastructure in mind, and supports a federated approach to linking distributed systems. Moving away from traditional information silos capitalise on the benefits from open data policies and developments in interoperability standards, distributed collaborations integrate and link together across multiple systems, enabling us to connect with multiple external systems to utilise data endorsed by responsible agencies and owners certified to meet their needs where they maintain accountability for that information. Operating with a rationale to maximise efficiency and support cross-government collaboration where we can fuse multi-source and multi-theme information extending the collective impacts of each. So let's move on to look at the data and our approach, centred on curation, standards and metadata. As I mentioned previously, access to trusted geospatial information is fundamental to evidence-based decisions and inform marine planning. AMSIS connects information and, importantly, presents a view of competing interest in the marine space. And when combined with multi-sectoral data, helps us present a comprehensive view of the maritime environment. With the intent to provide broader utility and impact than previous versions, we expanded the information presented within the system and catalogue. Currently, alongside high value regulatory information from across government, state and academia, 
groups them for ease of use into several themes, including Australia's maritime boundaries, shipping and navigation, petroleum and minerals, infrastructure and energy resources, fisheries, environment and heritage, native title and physical geography. AMSIS is now exposing over 300 discrete layers of marine geospatial information, curating upwards of 90 data sets sourced from 11 agencies, departments and marine entities. To get to that point, we established a series of principles to guide our assessment on what to include in the system. Largely driven by relevance to decision making, currency, the source of that information and the format available to us. We compiled a list of required data identified from our user requirements, and engagement with stakeholders and drawing on legacy and assumed knowledge informed by contemporary systems and international exemplars. And then we began searching. For anybody who's needed to find spatial information outside of your agency or organisation, or sometimes within, you're probably acutely aware of one of the ch common challenges you can expect to face. There's a difference in knowing what you need and being able to find what you need. Not all data was available spatially or in supported formats, however, by and large, most information was accessible and available, delivered in open, accessible formats, which we could consume and use within our system, and importantly, deliver into a catalogue. AMSIS enables the discovery and visibility of data through an integrated catalogue system, supporting access and reuse for all data available. <coughs> the catalogue is presented through a set of simplified item details, which compile summary information on the purpose of the data, additional detailed abstract information taken from owner catalogues, as well as highlighting any restrictions on use, clearly identifying the authority or owner of that information, and supports further reuse and integration of that information with links to web service endpoints and direct links back to authoritative catalogues. It also incorporates a simple search function to help users find what they're looking for, as well as other dynamic modes of search, including faceted searching by keyword, and recently the ability to spatially filter items using a simple map interface. Which brings us to how we present our work. We have the data and we have the infrastructure and ability to, com to combine it. Presenting information through a series of interactive mapping applications to allow users without restriction in regard to technical experience to access information in a way which presents an authoritative picture of use within the marine domain. This is as much an artistic function as it is technical, an application of digital cartography, applying understanding of data and domain to communicate a curated representation of, in this case, use and activity. AMSIS achieves this by delivering multiple map types, each offering different configuration of interface and tools, enabling simplified user experience and increasing complexity to that expected from a spatial professional. Like the previous iterations of AMSIS, we had intended to deliver information via multiple ready-made maps, thematically separated. And whereas the previous version divided information by legislation and legal instrument, which was excellent, provided you knew which legislation applied to what data, our approach was to simplify this for users and separate by sector. But that changed after we began gathering all of the information into a single map. We started to see intersections and interactions, which you wouldn't have had the data remain compartmentalised. Appreciating the benefits of this, our focus shifted in pursuit of one heavily curated map to rule them all. While there's a performance drawback, the advantage is that we're still able to support sectoral views by controlling the initial state of layers as we need it. This approach enables us to maximise use and utility while still delivering with specific intent and use. Support from a simplified map viewer is targeted towards non-spatial professionals who are in need of an answer without necessarily needing complex spatial tools or analysis, still drawing upon the same data holdings, but presented with reduced options, a more ready-made map with data inter interactivity limited to on or off. For users looking for more function, we provided an alternative in an advanced map. Targeted towards GIS professionals or those looking for more utility, we approached the advanced map to provide us with further capability, introducing advanced tools, layer functions and customization to provide more of a traditional GIS experience, enabling users to harness a broader array of spatial tools and controls. And related to that, it's important to recall, while it brings together multi-sectoral information, AMSIS maintains clear and deliberate focus, principally providing access to regulatory information in support of policy and decision makers by government. Here, rather, we've enabled the ability for users to add their own data and integrate information from other spatial systems, 
allowing for broader use beyond the initial scope of AMSIS. AMSIS walks a balance between data portal and single sectoral view, and it does this very purposefully by aggregating and curating information in direct support of marine regulation and the needs of marine planning, along with information which what I'd call one sphere beyond, to allow for insights outside the initial scope covered by AMSIS while making sure not to overcomplicate and incorporate information that might risk unstabilising or losing balance. There's widely recognised opportunity to service broader user community through the reuse of marine spatial data to support a larger range of activities and potentially unknown use cases beyond what was thought of as traditional use. It doesn't change the needs of existing user community, but untapped potential is too large and too valuable to waste. As a result, our program is much about stakeholder engagement and outreach and understanding user needs as it is a technological touch point. Going back to the fundamental challenges, if a user can't understand it, or if information is not available, then it can't be considered. Geoscience Australia, through the Maritime Jurisdiction and Advice Program, is responsible for the digital representation of Australia's maritime boundaries and provide advice and the spatial frameworks to support the administration by the Australian Government to regulate multiple activities within the jurisdiction, including long-standing support for the offshore petroleum and mineral spatial frameworks. In support for the Offshore Electricity Infrastructure Act, the Marine Spatial Information and Jurisdiction Advice Teams have been coordinating with Commonwealth marine regulators to understand how AMSIS can further integrate with their processes including those used to manage the assessments and titling for, new, for renewable projects within the Commonwealth Marine Area. AMSA supports consistency throughout the decision-making process from data access to outcomes. By providing access to the same baseline information, it ensures the processes of regulatory authorities remain consistent and align with common standards and practices. This consistency is crucial in promoting streamlined decision-making removes risk for offshore investment and improves regulatory efficiency and transparency. By providing authoritative information that's accessible to all stakeholders, including government, industry and public, it ensures consistent decision-making transparency in the process and generates trust in both. In December 2021, the Offshore Electricity Infrastructure Act was passed, enabling the establishment of offshore renewable electricity projects in Commonwealth waters. The Marine Spatial Information Team have been coordinating advice from multiple groups from across our agency, providing input regarding maritime boundaries and georegulation, offshore petroleum and carbon capture and storage activity and potential, seabed characteristics and subsea geology and natural hazards. Actively working with other Commonwealth marine entities to support the preliminary spatial assessments for areas suitable for offshore wind development. Applying a comprehensive approach to spatial assessment, the process has commonly started with a binary method of exclusion, identifying areas where activity can and explicitly cannot operate, incorporating multi-sectoral information including electricity infrastructure and protection zones, key ecological features, marine parks and shipping activity, followed by a balancing of interests in support for co-use, with further nuance and consideration given to less restrictive activities risks and sensitivities within a marine region. Understanding constraints, existing users and interests in an area is important and helps inform ministerial decision on whether to declare all, part or none of a proposed area suitable for offshore renewable energy projects. To date, AMSIS has supported the preliminary assessment and release of three proposed areas and two regions being formally declared establishing the future for offshore renewable energy projects in Australia, with the most recent announcement coming yesterday, in fact, proposing an area in the Bass Strait off northern Tasmania. In support of public consultation on the proposed areas for offshore renewable projects, the Marine Spatial Information Team has been assisting the Department of Climate Change, Energy, Environment and Water. So far, AMSIS has been an incredibly valuable tool in the process, demonstrating across four regional consultations the images cycling on the right are representative of some of the complexities in use within the Gippsland region in Victoria. The first region to officially declare an area to support offshore renewable projects. Just as understanding constraints, existing users and interest in a region is important to help inform decisions, 
It also provides transparency to the public about those considerations, to answer questions and improve the general understanding of the decision-making process, and in doing so, fosters trust through genuine engagement. AMSAS has excelled at informing members of the public through live demonstrations, being used to visualise activity within each region, and representing constraints and considerations. And we'll continue this outreach into the future. Now, a brief look at some metrics. Everyone's favourite. AMSAS was launched to coincide with the release for the first proposed area for offshore renewable energy announced by the Minister of Climate Change and Energy on the 5th of August 2022. Google Analytics was implemented and has provided metrics to identify user engagement, location and behaviours. In summary, AMSIS has been accessed by 5,500 users since, across 13,500 unique page views, 75% are domestic users and 25% international across 71 countries. AMSIS is fundamental to the publicity and public engagement of the Australian Government's offshore renewable energy uh, area declarations. And there's clear peaks of interest and engagement following offshore renewables announcements, with approximately 50% of traffic landing on the renewables pages. This year, to date, we've already exceeded the total user number, with over 6,000 users identified by October. We expect this number to increase and we, as we continually evolve and improve our stakeholder engagement and promotion of AMSIS. Looking at the future landscape and beyond, AMSIS implements a process of continual improvement, incorporating changes to increase the benefit and utility of the system. Driven by stakeholder needs and feedback, reviewing and updating the data and maps, and refining the user experience. To date, we've applied regular updates to the catalogue of data, as well as providing additional maps, largely in response to DQ's needs to support offshore renewable energy projects and subsequent consultations. A review of our data highlighted several gains and efficiencies, identifying layers which were no longer current or required or were supporting by previous regulatory systems. Interestingly, feedback from some of our stakeholders has identified that AMSIS is performing as a proxy for several of their outdated processes and functions, which is testament to the broad utility and approach that we've implemented. So there's an opportunity to engage across government to deliver better collaborative outcomes. This ongoing cycle of regular cadence of updates and improvements ensures that the data remains accurate and AMSIS is able to respond to emerging challenges and opportunities, maintaining its utility, reliability and value, allowing users to continue to make informed decisions based on the best available data. AMSIS will continue to change and evolve with the expectation that six months, 12, two years, 10, 20 from now, we have a very different look and feel, however, still uphold the same enduring principles and goals to provide enhanced access, connectivity and utility for the information necessary to support effective planning within our marine domain. And in doing so, empowering individuals, organisations and governments with the knowledge and tools needed to make informed evidence-based decisions to support the marine jurisdiction. We invite you in partnership to continue with us on this journey of understanding, access and action. Our marine domain is vast and complex, and geospatial information systems and digital technologies support our efforts to effectively manage it and navigate these complexities and deliver answers in service of the question. Our solution, AMSIS, treads a path to improve the understanding of our marine domain. In answer to the question, can we support better decision making? Presented through a particular lens using authoritative marine regulatory information, our solution is one of many possible. I urge you to find your lens, focus your solutions to solve your problems. In support of this, we offer our experience, approach, efforts and demonstrate our solution in the pursuit of improved decision making. Our experience emphasises the importance of being fit for purpose and implementing priorities in the pursuit of outcomes. Recognising that there's no single solution and that that's okay. And by working together and linking our solutions, we create a digital ecosystem. And in doing so, we open pathways, unexplored and untapped. It's crucial to acknowledge limitations, work to navigate past them and avoid over-engineering solutions. Waiting for perfection can delay progress 
and instead focus on delivering what's needed when it's needed. Sustainability is a key consideration, asking what it looks like in the context of your own environment, as well as for those accessing and integrating, and integrating from the outside. But regardless of design and philosophy, I hope we can all agree that improving access to geospatial information is fundamental to support our digital transition into a modern data and digital driven nation, and that we act collectively to improve the access and reuse of this information to ensure a sustainable society, economy and environment responding to the challenges of the future. AMSIS has played an important role over the years, actively demonstrating impact on the strategic and operational outcomes of the Australian Government. And it will continue to do so, providing access to authoritative and trusted marine geospatial information in support to decision makers. It's a privilege to be part of a team, section and branch and agency and collaborative program committed to delivering this, just as it is to be able to present to you about it today. So I thank you for your time and again for the opportunity to present our work. I hope it's been informative, interesting, and maybe just a touch inspiring. And with that, I'll leave you with, uh, to consider a question. How can you, as an individual, group or organisation, support better decision making? Thank you.